It's Valentine's week once again with Tony and Sage. Great to see you again. Yesterday we talked about the first two real stressors in a relationship, the loss of attraction and how we start losing that attraction. You start to feel that filter. You look at each other differently, you experience things differently. You start getting increased irritations, frustrations. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you get to the point where you start to emotionally stonewall. We talked about the four R's. Mm -hmm. And also the resistance and living in the world of unsaid, which leads to the rejection and ultimately repression. That's right. So today we want to bring up the last three. The third one is when somebody has got loss of attraction and then they start feeling these irritations or this, mm -hmm. this rejection or repression, the anger puts people in a place where it's hard to really feel intimacy. Mm -hmm. Now, some people get angry and they get intimate as a way to change the state, which mm -hmm. isn't a bad thing, obviously, sometimes can be quite useful. But when you stop feeling understood, mm -hmm. when you start feeling like your partner doesn't know who the hell you are, or you feel like they're rejecting you anyway, mm -hmm. you don't want to open yourself up to, you know, trying to be intimate many times because you think they're just going to shut you down. It's going to go nowhere. And so the third stage is a loss of physical passion. And it's crazy because in this space, sometimes meanings get made up and, you know, your partner might think that you're punishing them when really you're just feeling uncertain or you're feeling not understood. And there's all these unknowns that happen in this space that we're yeah. just really, uh, if you can, it's, you had a lover one, number two, you won't never get to number three. And also if, if either partner has a greater desire for mm -hmm. physical passion than the other, Absolutely. and then they start to use it as leverage mm -hmm. in the relationship, like, you know, I'm gonna punish you, I'm not gonna be intimate with or you. Or take the garbage out, then we'll have sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever strategy people use, people do weird, crazy things Thank with you. each other. The problem with that is that produces even more resentment. That mm -hmm. makes the person, it, you know, you can't punish your partner without punishing yourself. So you know, anytime you try to pull back love or you're not going to be as warm or as connected and you think that's making them change, mm -hmm. all it does is it's a sense of rejection and it reduces not only physical passion but emotional passion. It, it destroys intimacy. It does. I think this is such a great time to remember as well. It's so easy for us to look at our partner and all of these stressors are honestly about ourselves. It's about ownership within yourself, about how you're showing up in the relationship, whether you're speaking the unspokens, whether you're vulnerable and open to not get to level three. If you do get to this third level, very often you get to a point of learned helplessness because if you really like want each other so much and you start to connect but you don't feel the same level of intimacy, you might even have a great sex, but you're not going to have the same depth or you might have it afterwards and somebody's resentful. Mm -hmm. If you get to the point where you feel like you can't please your partner because mm -hmm. they're holding back, that becomes a learned helplessness where now you just begin to get to the final fourth stage, not final but fourth and fifth stages and that is you start to feel a loss of commitment. Mm -hmm where all of a sudden the partner's going like, they don't know me, they don't really, they're not committed to me, you know, they're not here for me, so I'm not there for them. Mm -hmm. And now your energy goes somewhere else. You may not physically follow through with another human being, but all of a sudden you start to take in the energy of other people who might find you attractive, or mm -hmm. you're in a happy state with them, you're not pissed off at them, and so they see you happy and they respond well to you. And when commitment starts to break down in a relationship, the relationship's near the death rattle stage. I mean, it's really nearing its end if you don't do something to turn around. And by the way, you can take this and reverse the whole thing. You can increase the commitment, you can bring back the physical Absolutely. passion, you can get rid of the irritation, you can bring back the attraction in a matter of minutes. But you gotta be able to identify what's really going on. And this is a great place for you, if you're listening to this right now or watching this right now, to say, to put both feet in the door, you know, and commit, and commit to yourself that this is what I want. I want this passion, I love my partner, and we're, I'm in. You know, we had a metaphor in the very beginning of our relationship about, we went for a little car ride, we actually drove to yeah, Universal Studios. And I looked at Tony and I said, honey, I said, I'll never get out of this car. And, what and I, I thought, how are we going to make it in the Universal Studios? <laughs> but the metaphor was just, it's just, we're, we're, I'm, I'm here. You know, we're never going to leave this place. So there's never the threat of, you know, one foot in the door, one foot out the door. And I think that's crucial. So if you've had those doubts in your relationship, this is the time just really to get clear with that and, and commit. And, and by the way, if you don't do that, mm -hmm. you'll end up in the final fifth area. Absolutely. And that is where you have a story of incompatibility would be the nicest mm -hmm. term for it. The story is, my partner doesn't give a damn, or they're wrong for me, or we never should have been together, or I can't live like this, or they're a selfish, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, mm -hmm. you know, fill in the blanks, right? And once you start building that story, there's, there's a process I have people doing a seminar very often where I'll say, I want you all right now to take a test. I want you to look around the room as fast as you can, look behind you everywhere and find the color brown. Mm -hmm. And they all look around, right? And I say, okay, close your eyes and see everything. Brown clothing, brown hair, brown everything. Close your eyes. And I'll say, okay, now tell me everything you saw in that room that was red. Mm -hmm. And you'll see people kind of laugh and I'll say, you know, how many of you saw much more brown than red? And they all raise their hand. I say, okay, now look for red this time. And they look and they look and they look. Mm -hmm. How many saw much more red this time? Everybody raises their hand. So why did you find more red this time? Because you're looking for it. Mm -hmm. Seek and you shall find. Well, here's what's really interesting. You'll find brown even when it's not there. Mm -hmm. 
Because once you have a story about your partner that they don't care, they don't love you, they're not committed to me, whatever the story is, once you believe it, mm -hmm. you find evidence to make it true. And here's how you do it. How, how do you find brown that's not there? Well, if you did this exercise, and you looked around right now, looked at everything for brown, close your eyes, and I said, okay. Open your eyes, did the same thing with the red, and I'd say, okay. How many of you saw beige stuff and called it brown just to feel successful? And everybody raised their hand and giggles. How many saw burgundy and called it red just to feel successful? We will color things to get to meet our story, to meet our expectation, even if that expectation is negative. So you gotta be so careful about the story you create about yourself, mm -hmm. like I'm not enough, and I'm not strong enough, beautiful enough, whatever enough, or the one that you have about your partner. And if you're single, and you're saying, well, you've been listening to all this stuff, but you know, what does this matter? Well, you're single, you can be attracted to anybody in the beginning. And you're single, you don't tend to be irritated too quickly. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna have sustained physical passion, if you're gonna have a relationship that lasts, you gotta get to commitment and you gotta develop a story. And my story in our relationship for me personally is, for me makes me so emotional, is I feel like all the good I've ever done to help millions of people that I get to experience the joy of people sharing with me over my life is how I got this girl. And it's like, that was my karma. My karma was I got the ultimate joy because I gave the millions of people, this is the ultimate prize. And that story for me, I mean, it's not a story, it's what I really believe is true, and so it makes me grateful every day. I used to have a story of how was I trapped in this situation? You know, how did I let myself get stuck here in a totally different relationship I was in? So your story defines the way you think, the way you feel, and it defines your relationship. As you can tell, we love love, and it's <laughs> Valentine's week this week, and I think it's just a perfect time to realize that you can rewrite your story. Yeah. You can rewrite your story in your relationship and in your life, and we're just really excited to share these points with you because they've just been so impactful in our own relationship. And we hope that you won't just get inspired to think about these things. We hope you'll do a few things and take a few actions. So maybe when you turn this off, uh, think about what is the story I have about my relationship, and if I don't have one, the only reason you don't have what you really want is the story you keep telling yourself about why you can't have it. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again, if you don't have the relationship you want, the only thing keeping you from having it is a story you keep telling yourself about why you can't have it. The good ones are gone, I'm not enough, I'm too busy, later we're not, we're not working so hard. What's the story that's keeping you from the ideal and what's the story or the narration that you need to move yourself forward? That would be our tip for the day. Take care, happy Valentine's, fall in love with love and each other and we'll see you till next time. <laughs> God bless. God bless, Happy Bye. Valentine's Day or early Valentine's Day. Bye-bye.